After Venice, Verona is the most important city in the Veneto region in terms of artistic heritage, with a wealth of architectural monuments and artistic treasures located in its city center. A walk through the historical center, through crenellated walls and soaring bell towers, uncovers this immense artistic and architectural heritage. Piazza Bra is an excellent starting point for a visit to Verona. The square takes its name from Breida, a deformation of the old German word Breit, referring to the clearing that once stretched out before the city. At the southern end of the square stands the Gran Guardia Palace, next to which are the main gates to Bra. Heart of the city and symbol of Verona the world over, the arena is the third largest Roman amphitheater and undoubtedly the most famous along with the Roman Colosseum. Since it was constructed, the arena has been host to gladiator fights, circuses, jousts, tournaments and equestrian shows. Verona is the city of opera. In the summertime, the arena hosts the most important opera season in the world, which 16,000 spectators come to see from all over the world every year. The Maffaiano Epigraphic Museum and the Philharmonic Theater are located next to the main gates to Piazza Bra. The majestic entrance to the Philharmonic Theater can be found in its courtyard. Beginning in 1612, the Philharmonic Academy acquired 28 epigraphs, which were then displayed in the courtyard in front of the Academy. The stone tablets are inscribed with commemorative and funerary verses. The epigraphic material and the reliefs are organized in chronological sections in the courtyard, through which the foyer, basement, and upstairs halls of the Philharmonic are accessed. The layout of the museum was the work of Scipione Maffei. The museum was bought from the city of Verona in 1883, and in 1982 it was renovated according to modern standards. Leaving the epigraphic museum and heading down Via Roma, the visitor comes to the Castel Vecchio and its splendid fortified bridge, two military monuments from the era when the Della Scala family ruled Verona. The bridge's three arcades vary in width and rest on pentagonal rostral pylons. The parapets are formed of crenellated walls with communicating walkways. Castel Vecchio was built by the Scaliger family during the 14th century. An imposing complex, it has a strategic position on the Adige River and dominates the area. Passing over the drawbridge, visitors enter into the great courtyard with its parade ground. Restoration work has been performed on the portals, the windows in Venetian Gothic style, and on the plaques on the interior facade of the Napoleonic barracks. The building is fortified with ghibelline walls and towers around its perimeter. Gardens in the Italian style adorn the parade ground in the interior courtyard. The equestrian statue of Can Grande, the great Scaliger family lord, is a fine 14th century work. The Basilica of St. Zeno is a masterpiece of the northern Italian Romanesque style. Simple but powerful, the church's facade is covered in golden stone, enlivened with sculptural elements that embellish its elegant lines. Dating from the 1st century BC, the Borsari Gate had a central court and double passages in its facade. Of this original building, only the exterior facade of local white limestone remains, with two arches framed by niches and surmounted by two rows of windows. With its shape recalling the structure of the ancient Roman forum it once was, Piazza delle Erbe was the center of the city's economic life for centuries. The square is surrounded by some of Verona's most significant historical buildings and monuments. 
Thanks to its beauty and the many magnificent historical buildings that line it, Piazza dei Signori is nicknamed Verona's drawing room. Piazza dei Signori is lined by many monumental palaces that once served the city's government, including the 15th century lodge of the council. The people of Verona call the square Piazza Dante because of the statue of the poet that graces its center. The government palace was built at the beginning of the 14th century by Can Signorio. The complex is developed around an interior court, with a lodge and two rows and portico. Italy has always attracted and inspired romantics. True romantics should not miss out on the chance to see the Casa di Giulietta, Juliet's house. At the end of the 1970s, a bronze statue depicting Juliet by the sculptor Nerio Costantini was placed in the courtyard. The world's most famous balcony is not authentic, but an assemblage of remnant pieces of marble from the 14th century. The Church of Santa Anastasia, built during the 12th century, is undoubtedly one of Verona's most important Gothic churches. The facade, which was left unfinished, is predominantly in terracotta and has a magnificent twin portal adorned with polychromatic marble, bas-relief sculpture and frescoes. The arches are supported by ornamental columns made of red and white marble. Long bifurcated windows run down the upper part of the church. The convent is situated next to the small square in front of the church. To the left of the church stands a funerary monument of Guillermo da Castelbarco, a knight closely tied to the Della Scala court. Verona's Duomo, or cathedral, was built on the site of two Paleo-Christian churches. The Romanesque façade is tripartite, presenting a pediment with slopes and a cornice with small arches. The city of Verona is characterized by its many bridges, the most important of which is without a doubt the Ponte Pietra. Ponte Pietra is located in one of the most panoramic and beautiful spots in Verona. Despite the various reconstructions the bridge has undergone over the course of its history, it remains one of the most important monuments from Rome and Verona. In sight of Ponte Pietra, the theatrical complex of the Roman theater is comprised of buildings from different epochs positioned in a spectacular natural hillside setting. Built in the last quarter of the first century BC, the Roman theater is the oldest building in Verona. The theater consists of the remainder of the stage, the orchestra, and cavea, which reaches a maximum length of 105 meters. The steps are divided into two sections, each of which is in turn divided by stairways. Some vomitoria allow access to the steps directly from above. The arches and ruins of the Roman theater built during the first century after Christ are still used to host the performances of the Estate Teatrale Veronese, or Verona Summer Theater, as well as the concerts of the Verona Jazz Festival.
At the top of the steps is a covered walkway and the remains of an overhanging gallery. The two galleries are crowned by a small arched loggia. Badly damaged by various natural events, including a devastating earthquake, and buried under rubble, Verona's Roman theater lay forgotten for centuries. In the 19th century, Andrea Monga, a rich Veronese merchant, bought the entire area of the Roman theater, and in the second half of the 1800s, the first excavations took place. In 1904, the city of Verona entered into possession of the area and continued renovations until they were completed in the 1970s. In 1923, the Archaeological Museum was moved to the convent of St. Jerome, which stands above the theater. Archaeological findings from Verona and its territory are exhibited there, including mosaics, sculptures and inscriptions, many of which were discovered during the excavations that uncovered the Roman theater. Embraced by the meanders of the Adige River that rise out of the misty plains of the Po Valley, Nestled at the foot of the Licinia Mountains, and caressed by the breezes of Monte Baldo and the sweet air of Lake Garda, Verona has always found itself at the center of Italian and European history. The city of Verona offers a unique opportunity to walk through the pages of the history of art and architecture splendidly presenting chapters from the ancient Roman era, as well as the medieval Renaissance and Baroque periods, together with the 18th century and Habsburg epochs, as well as prestigious examples of modern architecture. The Church of the Saints Fermo and Rustico is one of the most representative examples of Gothic architecture in Verona. The facade is characterized by the typical stripes of yellow sandstone and red bricks which together with the lovely portal contribute to create a building of singular beauty. Verona's churches represent the result of an entire millennium in which art and faith joined forces. From the earliest cathedrals dating back to the 4th century, to the paintings of Renaissance masters decorating Veronese churches, a vast panorama of styles characterizes Verona's sacred art and architecture, a wealth rarely found even in Italy. Verona possesses an amazing historical and cultural heritage, from the remnants of its magnificent Roman origins, to the medieval imprint of the Della Scala Lords, to its splendid Renaissance palaces, all surrounded by massive city walls. In the year 2000, Verona's historical center was declared a historical and cultural world heritage city by UNESCO.